like a craft beer through a pint glass. These are the gaze of our lives. A show where Lisa and Avery get out their gay decoder rings to decipher the gay alphabet and bridge the gap between the older and younger LGBTQ community and everyone fucking else. And now here are your hosts, Lisa and Avery. Don't blame them. Hey guys, it's Lisa and Avery, and today on the Gaze of Our Lives, we have the fabulous Chris Moorhead. Hi, How's former you? president of Indie Pride. Am I correct? Yes. Ah, what, what years were that? Oh, was that? Was that? Excuse I, me. I'm, you're asking me to remember. Exactly okay, what never years. mind. It's been quite a bit. <laughs> well, because you've been involved for obviously longer, so it all yeah, it kind of blends together. Yeah. The better part of the last 12, 13 years or so. Yeah. I, I, well, at least. Six years ago, I know for a fact. Yes. So that sounds about right. I have a question since we're talking about indie pride yeah. to start off with. I heard this brouhaha about something changing in indie pride, and I don't know exactly what all of this is about. Can mm -hmm. you explain what that is? What's changing? I'm not sure which. Something part. about a name change. Oh, a name change. Yes. Um, so I know that the current board and their executive director have been navigating what does true inclusivity mean for the community, and that also involves naming conventions. And that's actually been a conversation for a long time, whether or not we should hold certain names sacred and how you actually incorporate sponsorships and or recognize people for their service and dedication to the community. And so um, I believe said name change you're talking about is actually a reversion back to the Indie Pride Parade. The Cadillac Barbie? Yes. So and that's changing, correct? I believe so. Okay. Uh, I didn't know why. I just heard about that changing, and I didn't know, like, what was really going on and why. Mm -hmm. So the, the institution and organization as a whole has changed so much throughout its oh, years. Yeah. I mean, you talk about what it was when it first started in the 80s versus what it needed to be True. in the 90s. And then, turn to, you know, when you're getting into the 2000s, um, it really needed to evolve and develop. And we even went to Circle City in Pride and Circle City in Pride Parade, if you remember that. For oh, a yeah. While. And that was a nod oh, to yeah. try and distinguish between the organization versus the parade and the festival. Because people didn't realize that we did other things. And so we were trying to talk about those other things. And like, how do we get people to come to, you know, social networking things or educational series? And we were really interested in trying to branch out into those things. And being held hostage, as we felt at the time, by the moniker Indie Pride. And all, the only thing people knew about us was we had the festival and the parade. We gave it a shot and wanted to see if that would work. Nobody changed the way that they referred to it. So we ended up reverting back. Well, we had a guest on, and they she's younger, but she didn't know there was a festival. All she knew about was the parade. Uh -huh. And there are people, I think, that still only realize that there's this huge parade. Mm -hmm. They don't realize the festival. And a lot of gays, uh, friends of mine, that don't really get out in the community as much, don't realize there's a whole week of festival uh, festival. Mm -hmm. I actually didn't know that until last year, and that was only because I was actually working with someone um, who like knew like way more about Pride because she had like been involved with volunteering and stuff before, and then she's like, "There's like all kinds of things to do all week," and I just and I swear that blew my mind. Yeah, I used to <laughs> tell my boss, "I'm off this whole month." <laughs> <laughs> well, you know? I think you know the, the conversations where we're actually bringing in other cities and towns and making sure that they're aware of our programming here in Indy and and Chris. Hamburg and, and the entire Pride Board has been wonderful about actually going to their communities and taking Indy Pride on the road to help support their local prides. And that's something that was always a vision and a dream of ours, but we just didn't have the capacity. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We were all completely volunteer back then and still had to hold down a 40-hour week full-time job. Yeah. yeah. How does it make you feel when you see the parade nowadays and all of these commercial sponsors, like, I mean, just... Never in my life did I ever think that we would have CVS, Chase Bank, mm -hmm. Community Hospital, Roche, Lily, all these people in the parade. I mean, that it's so, I hate to say mainstream now, mm -hmm. that, I, I mean, how, how does that make you feel? I, it's a, it's a catch-22, right? I mean, this whole movement started in a riot and in a fight for acceptance and mm -hmm. tolerance and just to be normal. Yeah. Um, sometimes you have to be careful what you ask for. 
You know, <laughs> I, I think with marriage equality, we saw broad, much broader, much quicker and swifter acceptance than we ever imagined or That's dreamed. True. And so the community had to grow and change and, and our, our traditional safe spaces that we needed to, are gone, are completely gone. But that's the cost of change and the cost of acceptance. And so are we happy with that? Do we like where we're at? I don't know. That's waxing ph philosophically, if you will. Yeah. You go down that road if you want. It's funny. I've actually said that, you know, when I go to um, one of the gay bars and it's a lot of young, straight hipsters, I'm like, mm -hmm. We asked for this. Yeah, I mean, we did. It is. We asked for this, and this is what we get. But you know, you say that made it a lot easier for my generation to live how we do, and that's yeah. I think why I know. we do it, have the appreciation we do for people it's who like, they really work right. towards It's a that. catch twenty two because it's like I want to go to the gay bar to hang out with my friends. They and, just want to be your friend. But my, and they would think it's friends. so cool, and they would blog about it because they're hipsters. I know, I know, but <laughs> no, you don't understand. But back in the day, I mean, we went there like the safe space, it was and safe space. we mm -hmm. wanted, you know, and it's it's not. See, and I've never really known that. It's not quite like that anymore. But we asked for it, mm -hmm. and that's what I say. Well, we that's asked a, for this. That's a big part of the generational divide. Is you know, the younger generations didn't know that they had to be someone else, and mm -hmm. thank gosh, you didn't. Um, but the, the, at points in my life, I've been a completely different person outside of that bar versus who I was inside that bar and being yeah. able to be more me, you know, once mm. you were inside that safe space, um, you don't really need as many safe spaces anymore per mm -mm. se, if you will. Cause it seems like everywhere is all, not everywhere, but uh, everything is more open and more safe yeah in general well the information is definitely easier to access now than like back in the 90s where for me to figure out i was transgender what does like what does that even mean right like what people understanding that right and then so like having what i do now coming out when i did timing is amazing because the education is out there for sure and a lot again a lot of that's through like works like indie well Prime. like when did the t get added into the alphabet mm -hmm. you probably know that don't you um, ooh, I don't know the exact It date. wasn't in the 80s. No, I'd say that was late 90s, early yeah, 2000s. Because I, I, I didn't know what guess. the T was at all, except for a drag queen is what. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I knew because it, it wasn't a thing back I when like, I came out. Well, I feel like it happened in like the mid 2000s because I feel like I remember it happening and being like, what? <laughs> like, yeah. But it, that's, it's so crazy how things have, have evolved well, and it's, it's nice. It's been, such a, a wonderful journey, at least my part of it, has been really, I'm fascinated by watching from afar now them able to realize dreams and plans that we had always wanted to do and talked about and making sure that we were providing a safe space. I mean, when we first started to really dig into what was the parade and the festival, we weren't viewed as a family-friendly space. Mm -hmm. And people would not bring their children. Um, my very first festival um, as co-director was with Stephanie Swanson mm -hmm. and her and I were really committed to how do we provide a space where people can say and be proud that they want to bring their family and their kids. And you've done that. I mean, it's way more kid friendly now. Mm -hmm. I mean, family friendly oh, yeah. and you and DJ or Stephanie, um, <laughs> DJ Deanne, uh, really did that. I mean, I remember when you guys had like bounce houses for the mm -hmm. kids the first year and I was like, and you've cleaned it up, you know, you cleaned it up and, and what you saw. Yes. Well, and making sure that the week of events then provided the outlet for the other, you know, sub portions of our community that still wanted their safe space and their moment to shine. And I think Chris and the current board have done a wonderful job about taking that further and yeah. really providing events and, and activities like Trans Glam. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah, there's, there's an event. Girl Pride, Trans Glam. There's, pride. there's uh, I don't even, mm, can't think of all pet of them. Pride. Pet Pride. Yeah, Pet Pride. It, there's just so many of them. Did you, have you ever been to Trans Glam? No, um, I didn't even know. Again, I didn't know about it until last year. This is great. It's very and educational. Then, yeah. No, this is good. This is really good. No, <laughs> yeah. And then I did know about pet pride, but mm -hmm. I, um, but I, I only got to go with like my friend's pet because my pet's crazy. So <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Admire other people's pets. Right, it and happens. and they let and they're all about it, so it's great because right. you know that's what the whole thing's about. Well, but yeah. also, I love a good dressed up dog in a costume. Oh yeah, I think oh, that's does. like like I, I'll never turn that down. <laughs> I, you know, going back to one of my heroes that I actually get to go see live next month, uh -huh. Ellen. Oh, yes. Back when, yeah, I get to go see her show. Um, back when she came out on her show, El, the Ellen show, mm -hmm. and she lost everything. And, and the younger generation really only know Ellen as what she is today. And I've told people, you know, I'm going to see the Ellen show live and not one person 
straight, gay, black, white, male, female have said anything but, oh my God, I would love to do that. Yeah. And that just blows my mind that so many, I mean, even these cisgender straight men are like, oh, that would be so cool. Oh yeah. To my go grandma speak. loved Ellen, but she was always like, do you think everyone in the audience is a lesbian? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, no grandma, I'm sure it's a good mix in there. We still have work to do. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it, that, she... Uh, basically is the epitome of how it's come along because she lost everything. Yeah. Well, I mean, and I don't know what the timing was between that and the real world, the very first season, but I'll never forget when I saw the very first season of real world and Norman was an out gay man. And me seeing that as a child in San Diego, California was the first time I knew that I was not alone. Wow. I had no idea. I forgot I about I the real different. world. I, for, I, I just thought I was never going to be broadly accepted. And then when I saw the real world, I was like, there's others. Yeah. And that was that, that, you know, there's so many moments in people's lives where you just, there's a fork. And that was my fork to be like, oh, no, you can actually do that path. And there's somebody that else out there. And there's probably others beyond that. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. And yeah. it, it's just, it's amazing to me to think that's the real world. Because I remember like. You know, you the real world for me by my generation. Oh, when yeah. I watched it, I'd be like, "This is such like you know." <laughs> but like then to think like that, that could even like cause such an emo- like such a huge moment in someone's life. That's amazing to me because I I've never I've never even thought about mm-hmm. that. Well, and you think about the early years of real real world. This not to discount from like the, what they're doing now with yeah. their seasons and whatnot, but you have people like Pedro coming out and really putting a face and a personality mm-hmm. and 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 humanness behind HIV and AIDS and what yeah. that looks like mm-hmm. and what how it affects other people you know even the, the, the straight people that were on the show with him um they're to this day committed to hiv and aids awareness and activism and that's wonderful that's amazing yeah. and that's and that's a huge impact and what a, like what a way to use something you've been given like right. a spot on a reality show and like because there's so many people who don't use it that mm-hmm. way mm-hmm. and that just put then really like and i think and i feel like we've talked about that guy on the show before too i feel like I don't know, but I, it's been a while. So, but the one, but I remember the first time I, I had to go and re, I had to go and see this. I had to go online and find these episodes and like see this. And in my head, I really thought that is truly using like a reality show for something that you don't you don't see that on reality shows. You don't see the contestants using it for something for good. Yeah, right for well, a platform. I mean, it, it's now viewed as as a lucrative source of income. Yeah, because you can you can make money at those things, but. I think back in the early days of it, at least, and I think even the early days of the movement and what we did with Pride, it was about finding our voice and making sure that we were helping to elevate all the voices that we could in the right ways. Yeah. And that's, you know, whether you like name changes of parades and festivals or you name it, they're just doing their best to to provide Absolutely. a space where everybody can feel welcomed and taken care of and safe. Oh, I can, and well, and, and I, I'm surprised people can criticize because honestly, every time I go to it, I'm just amazed what you've pulled off. Yeah. You know, because at that, then it's like, just take that in. It's, I mean, there's negatives always, but take in what's really accomplished. There's always going to be somebody who doesn't like something. Yeah. No matter what. I mean, I don't care what it is. If you're talking about the parade, if you're talking about anything, there's always going to be somebody who dislikes what you have, yeah. your opinion. And, you know, and the overall opinion, though, is I think pretty amazing of how it. Oh, I yeah. have my straight friends since I was five years old go to the parade. They were there last year and I didn't even get to go. <laughs> I mean, and they want to go to the parade now and, you know, just to support. I and, actually got to walk in the parade for the first time in a decade. Wow. So I never got to see the parade because I was always down at the festival grounds. Uh huh. And so last year, the year before, maybe three years ago, was the first parade I actually got to see. Wow. And, yeah. you, and then you walked in the last one that was, wasn't uh-huh. that three I hours with long? My, with my work, with Newfields. Wow. Yeah. We had our own little contingency. That's awesome. I was supposed to be in it on my scooter with Shelly's voice, but oh, yeah. unfortunately the MS decided that I wasn't going. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, no, I'm kind of glad it was hot and long. It was very long. <laughs> we was waited a very long a time. A lot longer than it used to be. I walked it one year with the Metro. Yeah. We are, Cause we played softball. They sponsored our softball team and we walked with the Metro float and it wasn't that bad, but now, I mean, and not, and don't get me wrong with bad. Um, it wasn't that long. And oh, well, you know, something oh, I couldn't have don't done it. realize is we had to fight for that. Yeah. Um, and, and you probably definitely don't know this. We were in danger of, use, of losing our parade route at one point because we had gotten so big. Um, we were t- maxing out, even having more 
more floats and actual um, entries than the Indy 500 parade, which is oh the gosh. largest parade in the state. So wow. we, we grew and exceeded them um, at, ooh, that would have been, I was festival director year two, so call that eight, nine years ago. And uh, the city said, okay, so you're at the size now where you're impeding traffic too much and you need to go to the set prescribed route, which would have been straight down Pennsylvania. You'd take a, a right turn onto, uh, what is that, South Street, and then back up Meridian. Huh. We didn't like that because that completely cut out our entire community. Yeah. The neighborhood. Yeah. Mass Ave. Yeah. It, it would have taken us completely off of Mass Avenue. And yeah, that can't and so be. So <laughs> myself and Sherry Brooks and uh, I think Jason Henson Nolan was a part of that conversation. And, and really, we, we went after it and said, we need to, to save this. We need our, our, our prey to stay in our neighborhood. How yeah. can you take us out? And so they gave us some, some great tips on how we could secure support. Uh, Mass Ave Merchants Association was amazing. Uh, they came to the table and said, no, we do not want them to leave our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. They are a part of us. They are uh, part of our culture and our history. And I'm so they goosebumps. fought for us. And then I literally went solo from every, every single neighborhood association meeting I could get into to speak with them. And not one of them said that um, they supported the decision to move. They were all wanted oh us gosh. to stay. So at the end of the day, we got to stay. That's awesome. There's That's so many amazing. stories like that, but people just don't know. Like, <laughs> the amount of work it's and... Yeah. and things and effort and time and just frustration sometimes with the city yeah. and, and different entities that goes on to make the parade and the festival what it is. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot. I was on um, the board one year or two years, I don't know, and I helped with Girl Pride and stuff. And there's so much, even Girl Pride, that's a one night smaller event. There's a, so much that goes into it that I, I don't think people realize how much they are like, oh, look at this parade. It's just here. It magically and magically pops it. up. And that's it. You know, I don't think people really look it into behind the scenes. It zero dollars to do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then people complain about the festival charging. Yeah. Oh, I would. Really? Just get over it. Either. How much? What is it? $5, Five, ten dollars? Yeah. Shut up. And, the, and I love this step, you know, because they were, I had switched into more of a consulting advisory role at that point um, when they rolled that up. That was always the plan. We knew we were going to get to a space where we had to charge. It's too big. It's too expensive. Um, you can't get enough sponsorship and especially making sure that we have the right sponsors. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want all alcohol sponsors, okay, we hear you, but we still have to get infrastructure and funding from somewhere. Right. Yeah. So switching to your sales forces and, and other big, huge corporations yeah. like that that have the capacity and the want and will and are actually living those values. Yeah. You know, Salesforce has incredible inclusivity oh, yeah. mm -hmm. goals for their um, company as a whole and who they are, as well as their hiring practices. What a wonderful partner to oh, be yeah. able to do Oh, that. yeah, for sure. And so to, to then switch shift gears and engage Absolute or whoever you will in a different way. Yeah, which... They're a great sponsor, too, though. They've been, they've been wonderfully they, they, They're great. I mean, they held up this festival and this parade for years when mm -hmm. we couldn't get any other sponsorship. You, there were no sales forces. There were no yeah. corporate entities that were willing to speak up and say, hey, we want to support you, and you can actually use our logo and our name to do that. Yeah. Um, that wasn't the case. Yeah. And we talked about this once before, and I want to bring this up because I don't know if I, we may have talked about it, but people don't understand like some of the stuff like the pink triangle. Mm -hmm. We've talked about that before. Yeah, we've talked about it. Before. So, I mean, but a lot of people don't understand that that actually we've been, um, you know, persecuted since the Holocaust. Yeah. And the pink upside down pink triangle came from the Holocaust. And I, you did a, um, a thing with the flags or the the. What was that? It was touring or something like that? So um, the original, are you talking about the Gilbert Baker? Maybe. Flag? That's yeah. So there's several different things um, looped into that. And, and like to me, history in general is fascinating. Like I um, moved, lived in New York for a while. Um, that was the first place I lived where I was actually totally out from day one. Mm -hmm. um, I was 22 years old. And so being so close to kind of one of, one of the numerous origin stories Stonewall. of LGBTQ history, mm. um, learning about that, but then that opened up my mind to, wait, San Francisco was going through this at the same time, Chicago was going through this at the same time, and though, yes, New York is, is given that Stonewall name, mm -hmm. there's other cities that were going through this. Um, and part of that history is, is the origin of the flag itself. And Gilbert Baker, um, who actually just recently passed away, which is mm. pretty sad, but he was 
noted with creating our rainbow flag as we know it today. Um, and then Zach Adamson did a modern application of our rainbow flag, which I love. Um, I'd like to call it the capital city flag. Um, I don't think that's an official name, but he <laughs> took our, our, our city flag, the, the city of Indianapolis flag with the red star in the middle and yeah. made a rainbow version of it. Oh, that's awesome. I haven't seen it's, that. It's enormous. It's actually um, walkable um, down the parade. It takes up the entire parade route. And oh he's gosh. walked it down the parade route the last couple of years. That's so cool. We yeah. had him on, and we didn't, you didn't know talk that. about that. No, it was amazing. It's really, really cool. It's very heavy too. I we, believe we, it. We borrowed it for the world. Prize. Hey guys, it's Lisa with the Gays of Our Lives, and this week's episode is sponsored by my own CBD line through Denver CBD. It's actually the first one in town here that has vitamin D in it, and it's also helping with different causes. The strawberry flavor. 5% goes to Cancer Support Community. The orange flavor, 5% goes to the National MS Society. Use my code, Lisa20, and get 20% off your order. <laughs> we borrowed it for the World Pride Conference um, when we hosted it here a couple years ago. Um, I wanted it as the backdrop for behind where the dais would be and, and the, exec the international executives would be sitting. So that would be their backdrop, and every picture would have it in it. Um, I, I got a panicked call from the individuals that were helping to put it up around 11 o'clock at night, like the day before we were welcoming everyone. Like, we need you down here. And they had <laughs> tried everything, but the flag was so big, it was bigger than the wall. And these were like 20 foot ceilings. Oh my gosh. I did not realize how big it was. Fortunately, they were brilliant and they figured out a way to make it work. But um, yeah, no, it's a big flag. That's intense. I, that you know what? And you wouldn't think about how big it is when it's like laid down flat in front no. of you every year, but yeah. hanging it on a wall. Oh my gosh. Well, and you think it, and looking back, it's four lanes of traffic. Oh my gosh. That's gosh. true. Yeah. That's true. That's I mean, you think about the parade route. Yeah. Huh. Oh my God, what a weird way to get perspective on that. Yeah, that's I, so cool. You don't think about it that way though. I kind of wish I had seen that process. Uh, it was, there was just a, a handful of people in that room trying to get that thing up there. Trying to get it. so heavy. Oh my gosh. Yeah. They really did a wonderful job. The hotel, um, usually you have to pay for stuff like that. And this individual production company believed in what we were doing so much. They did all of that for free. That's, that's awesome. A, yeah, that's yeah. great. That's awesome. So, okay, let's go backwards. Yeah. How old were you when you came out? Um, okay, so I turned my, I was thinking about this before coming here today, because I was like, I wonder what they're gonna ask me. I don't know. <laughs> we never know either. Yeah, no, it's totally fine. I prefer it that way. Um, I, I kind of split my coming out into two different categories. There's like when I was at out, out, and like talked about it, and people knew about it, and then there was like, you know when you would sneak out of your parents' house, or sneak out of the college dorm, and like go meet people. Um, so that would have been senior in high school, so 17, 18 years old. Was that what the first time you came to terms with it? Um, I don't know that I was fully had come to terms with it quite yet, but okay. yes, where, where I knew okay. that this was something I wanted and I was actively pursuing that. Um, but truly coming out was in college, uh, my junior year, and uh, came out to some friends that really reacted amazingly well. Or they were like, duh. Uh, <laughs> One of them, um, she doesn't recall calling me out. Um, she was feeling <laughs> real good one night at a bar and totally oh, called yeah. me out and said, can you just say it already? Because we all know already. And I was mortified. And the following day, um, I pulled her and her then boyfriend, um, still one of my best friends, Adam aside. And I came out to Adam and um, she was like, oh my gosh, I never knew. And I was like, you last <laughs> night. It's like, oh, I was, I don't remember last night. So I was like, well, if that's what lit my fire to, to want to do that, it did it. And the way that they reacted and how accepting they were was wonderful. I love the fact that it's not a shock to come out anymore. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's just. My friends, every time I've come, both times I've come out, it's been okay. And yeah. then, and then, well, Cindy's was, so he, him, his, like right now, right now he, him, his, I'm like, yes, right now, Cindy. <laughs> you know, that's just, I, I just love how accepting it is now. Yeah. It's, I never imagined that when I was donating to uh, human rights every year, I I'd donate to uh, the human rights campaign and they called me and they'd get donations. And I said, you know, it's sad because marijuana will be legal in Indiana before gay marriage. <laughs> <laughs> I was wrong. So you jinxed no, you us. Were wrong. I, just I was were well. I <laughs> no. I really, honestly believed that marijuana would be legal before gay marriage. Well, especially gay marriage federally. I remember when that happened because I met in Indiana though. Well, yeah, but I mean, well, well, to be fair, it was legal for like a window, right? 
Yeah. And then and then we had to go through the whole federal thing for it to become legal yeah. again. But, so there were several steps to that because that was my presidency. Um, that was, um, you know, you think about Mr. Pence um, mm-hmm. and when he was in office, um, HDR3, and, and all of the battles that we all went through together as a community that yeah. really helped connect us all against one common cause. And that was all while marriage equality was kind of bubbling up and kept coming up. Um, But yes, we were legal for a brief window and then it got put on hold and then took to the regional level and that's, we actually got marriage equality before the nation did. Um, So we were granted it um, through the circuit court system rather than the national um, opinion that came down, which was always something we were proud of because to us that was like, sorry, Mike. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And this is how wrong you were. (laughs) Indiana actually got legal marriage for LGBTQ people before the nation did. Right. Was that 14 or 15? Uh, if you look at everyone's Facebook wall, um, it, <laughs> what, what wedding anniversary are we all on? Right. Because so many weddings happened. It was amazing. Well, yeah, I called friends and they were over in Ohio. I said, get over here now. It's legal because they were fostering kids yeah. and everything. I said, get over here now. They just made it legal and it's probably not going to be for long. And they made that window of the two yeah. days before they cut it off again. And then they said, nope, you have to do recognize it, recognize this. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I, I was like, oh, I'm going to it's going to cost me a lot to get all these wedding gifts because oh, yeah. they was, all did it at one time. Yeah, and, now right. and now your anniversaries <laughs> so. are just. And now oh. all the anniversaries. That's yeah. wonderful. You know? Yeah, no, it, but it's just it's insane to think that because I never imagined in my lifetime I would see it. Mm-hmm. And it's just so accepting and accepted it by everybody. Almost. I don't think that any of us really thought in our lifetime we would see that. Yeah. I know I didn't. I hoped for it. Yeah. But to be able to live in a post marriage equality, you know, state, if you will, um, it's interesting. I never thought I'd be here. I actually had friends ask me to officiate their wedding and it wasn't legal. And I went ahead and got ordained just uh-huh. for fun. And after I did, I performed their wedding. It was in front of their family and friends and everything. They had to go to California to actually get married, mm. you know, yeah. and nowadays I can actually sign the wedding or the marriage certificate and everything else. But never when I thought I was just getting ordained for fun for them, just so it kind of seemed legal okay. or seemed legit. Did I imagine I would actually be officiating officiating a bunch of them that are really legal? If you remember probably that year, we had a mass wedding. Oh, yeah. That was fun. Yeah. What? How many people? Oh, I can't remember the number. I mean, at least a dozen or so. Um, But we we partnered with the Indy Rainbow Chamber of Commerce. And we said, okay, so we have this crazy idea. Mm -hmm. We want to marry a whole bunch of people just to kick off the day. Yeah. You know, And, and so we did. This is when it was still at Veterans Memorial Plaza. And so we had a giant ceremony and a reception right afterwards. And it was a blast. That's it was awesome. So much yeah. Fun. And then they did it on uh, yeah. with Same Love, um, Macklemore. Uh huh. On uh, you go, Same Love. <laughs> uh, what was that? Uh, what the, uh, was it? Uh, the Grammys or Emmys? I, I don't it was know. The Grammys or the something Oscars. like that. And the they Grammys. did something like that too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, they and had it a, just a was huge wedding. That was so awesome. Just that to see. Song, did you I see think. that? No, I didn't see the huge. Oh, I don't yeah. watch the Grammys oh, regularly. Wonderful. I'm a terrible person. I mean, that that was the year. That's that the only reason I watched it. I think that song and that oh. video train opened a lot of minds that I, previously were closed. I agree because he is a cisgender straight male, mm-hmm. and people liked him. So when he's singing about it, they're like, "Oh, okay." When just the nature of the song itself, how well it was written, and mm-hmm. if you got to see the video, the video was mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah. yeah, I have seen the music. I, mean, I remember video. watching it over and over and over again, and just you know, tears coming down my face. Mm-hmm. So happy that somebody got it. And yeah, they were they were helping to communicate it broadly. I mean, to use your platform as a musical artist to help elevate marriage equality. That's amazing. You know, and the fact I think you know. The story is like his cousin or something like that. He said, you know, I can't get married until you guys can get married. And that's what sparked him to do that is just incredible for a human to act like that, in my opinion. But just my opinion, of course. No, I'm no, honestly, it's funny because when the song came out, I still wasn't really like in good terms with like with my family with everything yet. And so that song came out and it really made me like very emotional. And I just like and I'm just because I didn't expect a song like that. It was like. That song totally understands what I'm going through. Like, you know what I mean? It was just, it's, I, 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 
so from your guys perspective to mine mine like just being like oh my god that there's a real understanding that exists you guys being like people can make songs like that now oh yeah <laughs> well i think people were making songs like that along the way but mm. it was subtle and yeah hidden yeah and, and the hidden know, meaning, if yeah. you were in the know right you knew that song was about gay people I mean, yeah people looked at elton john back in the day and they didn't know or didn't want to admit that he was that gay. blows my mind <laughs> sorry <laughs> no i mean that, or uh, real, you uh know? george michael i thought you were yeah. gonna say liberace well yeah uh, <laughs> uh, that's true but yeah I, I i i'm grateful for how it's changed and how accepting it is nowadays oh, yeah. you know i mean we're broadcasting on the street it's downtown cool. Indianapolis. I didn't realize you'd be like right on the street. Yeah, and yeah. they can hear us talk, you, you know, and nobody people. nobody cares. It huh? says the gaze of our lives right there in the middle of downtown Indianapolis. And <laughs> no problems, never, you know, would I have imagined that. It's an amazing so place. It, it's, yeah, it's, I think Indianapolis is very, has become very accepting. I don't know about other cities as much, but. I, you know, a lot of people always ask me because I've, I've lived in a lot of places. And they asked me, why are you in Indianapolis? I was like, because it's amazing. I love um, it. I loved moving. So I've been here now 12, almost 13 years. And I moved right at the right time, right as Mass Ave was starting to turn the corner mm -hmm. and rebuild. And I got to see and be a part of this whole resurgence and to be a part of acceptance and, and really helping to be a part of the movement that we've all been going through here. And it's been the joy of my life to be able to do that. I, I adore it. So yeah, no, I, I love Indy. I do too. You know, and I say that all the time. People are like, why aren't you in LA yet? And I'm like, mm, I'll probably stay here and just go back and forth yeah. because I love Indianapolis. I mean, I don't know. I really just love this place. You know, the there's so much a long way, you know, and, and if you look at the broader spectrum, like, you know, what our mayor is doing and, and like him or, or leave him, he's, he's doing some good things. Yeah. Um, you look at um, organizations like Visit Indy, you know, our tourism partner, they are doing wonderful things for this city and really putting us on the map and helping to drive even for the LGBTQ community. We're on their radar. They're mm -hmm. actually going after things for us. Yeah. You know, they helped us win the World Pride Conference and being able to host it here. It's people coming from around the entire world to Indianapolis. Like, who would have ever thought that would have been a thing? No, I, well, and I, you yeah. know, and I got put in perspective for me when, like, all of a sudden you saw more major entertainment coming through. And I mean that in, like, we're not talking, like, oh, coming yeah. and doing a small show, but, like, you see these huge productions even at White River, down at, up in, that's not Conseco anymore, Banker's Life, the basketball. Banker's Life, yeah. Is it Banker's Life? No. No. They keep changing names. I don't know. I, I know. Track. Okay, what can Seco? The Field House. Oh, the Field House. Seco and Deer Creek. That's what Oh, it's always and Deer Creek. I can keep up with 100. Deer Creek always. That's not even Klipsch anymore, is it? I can't keep up anymore. But Roth Home Mortgage, I think. Yeah, it's, okay, it's Deer Creek. That's never what you expected for Deer Creek in its no. future, but that's fine. Yeah. It will always be Deer Creek, period. Right. Well, I, I, we have a, I, have, I used to have a t-shirt. Well, I still do, but it's like for a child. Um, and it, <laughs> so but, it's about your size? Well, it's a little snug, um, but uh, but it had like the Deer Creek logo on it, and I'm like, that used to be a thing, and no one knows. Yeah. yeah. So That's yeah, so but things are changing, and I think I think they're doing a great job here in Indy, and it. I don't want to leave permanently. No. I mean, LA is my second homo away from homo. So, <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's. I want to stay here. And, mm -hmm. you know, if they can get the entertainment industry here, because we have... They're definitely trying. They're trying. And if yeah. they can get that here, oh, that would be amazing. We have so much to offer. I would agree with that. And you're, you're seeing companies like Salesforce really, you know, plant some deep roots mm -hmm. here. Oh, yeah. And you're going to continue to see that the more inclusive we have become. And I know that was immensely important to winning some of those bids. Um, and that's, that's part of the work that Indie Pride has done along the way to help be a good partner and, and helping those companies that are vetting Indie to understand that we are an inclusive city, that we do work for progress mm -hmm. of acceptance and all things. And uh, yeah, they're doing some good work. And you work at Newfields, is that I correct? Do. What is that exactly? Newfields is a wonderful cultural campus. Some of you might have known it as the Indianapolis Museum of Art. Mm -hmm. um, we really were interested in pursuing a more inclusive term where all people could feel like they could come and have an experience with art or nature. 
Um, only being called the Indianapolis Museum of Art also limited us. People didn't realize we're a 152-acre campus. Mm -hmm. We have the 100 acres Art and Nature Park, and that's free and open to the public. And some beautiful gardens surrounding the historic Lily House, as well as the greenhouse, an orchard. And then we have the Indianapolis Museum of Art that's kind of at our core. I officiated my be- Casey's wedding there oh, at yeah. the love the love thing in the. Oh, that's coveted spot yes so that's a beautiful it's spot. it's beautiful that the fields out there and everything i mean the 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 whole thing is just gorgeous it's been so much fun to be a part of even you know our research and says an institution um i started off just overseeing volunteerism they liked in fact the reason why i got the job was because of indie pride and and my work with them and and helping to develop what volunteer program and volunteerism look like for the festival um, they loved that, and they wanted that to be a part of it. And then they added on community engagement and internships, and now I oversee guest experience as well. That's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah, really cool. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. All right, well, we have a segment that we like to call mm-hmm. Gays Ask. Okay. So we got some questions, just fun questions right. for you. You want me to start? Yeah, you start. I start. All right. Really. If you could go to dinner with anybody, who would it be and Why? Oh, my grandmother. Ah, uh, Yeah, I'm sappy like that. I, yeah. You know, you only have so much time with people in this world. True. And uh, if I could have dinner with anyone over and over and over and over again, it would be my grandmother. Now, do you want an interesting answer, like a celebrity type thing? Okay. Is that what you want? All right. I like the um, last answer. I, I do, too. I it like the last answer. my answer. Yeah. Ah. Mine would be my mother, so, you know, um, I get it. No, but, like, outside of that, like, who would be... See, I'm not starstruck. Madonna. I would love to have dinner with Madonna. That'd be so much fun. Just to pick her brain. Just, yes. I I feel like the conversation would be Oh, yes. I just want to chat. I agree. Like, that's, I mean, I I am not easily starstruck, but, like, getting to be a part of that Super Bowl field team, that Uh, was a transcendent. I was here every, I was down here every day. That was so much fun. That was incredible. Yeah, it was. But. We need that again. She would be fun. Oh, she would absolutely be. I See, agree. I would argue to say the Super Bowl really helped start getting more national attention for Indianapolis. Oh, oh yeah. That was Definitely. crazy. Like, cause I remember, well, it was know, amazing too. Well, when I was in high school and I just remember thought, thinking like, oh, holy crap, like that's really happening. Yeah. We yeah. were down here every day. I mean, it was just, and I don't drink or anything, a party like that, but it was just so much fun. The atmosphere. Mm-hmm. And you know, we ran in, I ran into Adam Sandler at oh, breakfast. Yeah. Oh yeah. And you know, it's so many different people you just would run into and me just mm-hmm. was like, they're in Indianapolis. Mm-hmm. That's weird. And then open container law. Sorry, no, that's not. That wasn't what I liked about it. <laughs> too young. <laughs> yes. All right. What's your question, Avery? Okay. If you could be on any reality TV show, mm. what would it be and why? Oh, any reality TV show. Um, either Survivor or The Amazing Race. Um, I'm fascinated by just. I love travel in general, Mm -hmm. so Amazing Race would be super fun. Um, Survivor has always fascinated me. I've been a longtime fan since inception, and their ability to still be on whatever season they're on, like, is it season 120? Man, yeah, no, um, they've been I didn't even know they were still going. Oh, my they're gosh. still going strong. And, and, I don't watch TV, though. And, it, like, and really, amazing. the games, like, even the games have changed when you look at what they used to do on Survivor oh, yeah. to now. Because I remember, because I watched at the beginning, and then I took a break, and then I started watching again. I'm like, this is Survivor? Right. Because it's gotten, first of all, not only more intense, but, like, just everything they do is way more well thought out. Oh, fully. I mean, it, re- realistically, I'm not going to win at Survivor. Um, their challenges are too physical. I'm oh, yeah. an old girl. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it'd probably be the amazing race though um yeah i don't know who my partner would be because michael and i would probably kill each other i'll say now you have to pick a partner though okay now you can have any partner on the amazing race who is it oh well only because i just said his name my love michael even though we'd fight like <laughs> cats and dogs on it because we both think that we're right all the time sometimes we are you guys um, have been together what five, five years now five years, yes. yeah i love that yeah yeah he's a flight attendant so he's pretty savvy when it comes to travel See, he sounds like he'd be a great partner for that. Yeah. Well, partner in general, but partner for that as well. Oh, totally. <laughs> All right. If you could be a superhero, what would your superpower be and what would your name be? Oh, my gosh. Okay. Superpower has always been um, flight. I've always wanted to fly. Okay. Like, dream about flying. I just think it'd be really fun. Um, but you then, can do that with Michael being a flight attendant, can't you? Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, okay. There are benefits. Um, 
what would my super name be? Oh gosh, back in the day I would have said like um, gay man. Um, <laughs> these days, art and nature man. I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. Cultural. There's got to be a combination dude. of those things yeah. you can find. <laughs> I'm not creative in that way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're just very organ- organizing creatively. Pretty much. Yes, that's exactly it. But you're dang cute. So there oh, you go. I appreciate that. That, that <laughs> makes up for it. Do you have any other questions? Oh, I kind of took my other one when I wanted to follow up the survive the Amazing Race question with who your partner would be. Oh. Um, I didn't know I could do it like immediately. Um, mm-hmm. Man. No, I don't. I'm okay. So, I was so excited. <laughs> well, we appreciate you coming on. Uh, for we've been me. trying to get you on for a while. Our schedules just wouldn't coordinate quite. And my schedule's a little crazy these yeah, days. Yeah, I'm but, sure. Uh, things are starting to settle down as, as my new staff gets into place. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what we get to do. Good. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate it. And helping educate us and a lot of people on, you know, backstories of the Indy Pride and everything well, I else. I think it's and so important, you know, like to share that knowledge, that information more broadly. And, and I love what you're doing, that you're connecting generations and making sure that we're bridging the gap, um, perceived or otherwise. You know, we're all here because people came before us, like them or not. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's, true. that's our history. We have to accept it. And, and as we continue to grow and evolve, I hope people just stay in the conversation together. You know, you don't have to agree. Exactly. That's true. And, that's and honestly, and, true. and it's something you can, like my grandpa used to say, as long as the conversation is happening, there's yeah. going to be some type of solution. Yeah. And that's what today's day and era, though, a lot of people won't have conversations, no. unfortunately. And, so. and the more talking we can do and the more stuff like this we can do, mm-hmm. I, I'm eternally committed to that. You know, like it or not, hate it, make it uncomfortable or not, um, have those uncomfortable conversations. And, Absolutely. And find out those people that think so differently from you that you may have something to learn. Um, if someone's so passionate about something, figure out why. Mm-hmm. You know? I agree 100%. Talk. And at the end of the day, again, you don't have to agree. That's okay. That's true. We don't have to all agree on everything. We just oh, have to be yeah. kind to one another. My dad's this diehard libertarian. I'm very liberal. It's actually been my favorite conversation my entire life. So. Yeah. yeah, no, it, and that's what it boils down to is just be a good human. Yep. Be nice. Be kind. You know. We appreciate you, Chris. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. If you guys want to be on our show, you can reach out to us on our Contact Me page at www.laughs.life. Or you can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube. Kind of. YouTube, for sure. YouTube 100. Because you can watch the episode on YouTube, so you got to follow that. Truth. Oh, you said that YouTube already then, didn't you? Yeah, 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 it's all right. (laughs) This has been Gaze of Our Lives. Make sure to check out the gaze online at www.laughs.life.